Could Aquaman exist? Or is that idea in deep water? Science behind Aquaman Aquaman is by far my favorite DC hero, and for one reason. <clears throat> Jason Momoa! <clears throat> but seriously, the idea of Aquaman or Atlanteans possibly being real excites me. But is it more than just a pipe dream? It's not that simple, you see. There's a few big questions that are all parts of different theories and realities. So let's get to the basics of Aquaman. Where's the guy live? Well, aside from underwater, Aquaman lives in an ancient society known as Atlantis. Atlantis is a great city slash country thing that has sunken underwater and become home to modern Atlanteans, human-like sea dwellers with superpowers. Whew, that's a lot of stuff that sounds impossible. But is it impossible? Some things are, and some aren't. Let's take a trip back to ancient Greece. The philosopher Plato, whose work is still debated and praised to this day, was the first person to ever reference the legend. In his writing, Plato once tells the tale of a great island society, an island big enough to be a continent. According to Plato, this island was known as Atlantis. In his story, Plato tells of the great island of Atlantis, with its utopia-like state and its magnificent city at the center of the island. Plato even described its inhabitants, the Atlanteans, if you will, as being half god and half mortal. However, according to his legend, the gods grew angry with Atlantis for its immoral pursuits, and gave it, quote-unquote, one terrible night of fire and earthquakes, that in a single night sunk Atlantis and all its people to the bottom of the sea. So that's the legend of Atlantis. However, it may not even be the full legend. Plato says in his writing that the story of Atlantis has been passed down for 9,000 years before his time. That's a lot of time. So, if Atlantis was talked about 9,000 years before Plato's time, why don't we see more writings of it? Well, there's a few answers. The most common theory is that Plato's tale of Atlantis is indeed fictional, and not historical at all. The theory states that Plato used the fictional island of Atlantis and its tragedy to convey a moral message that had to do with his own teachings. Now, don't get me wrong, that is completely plausible, and for all intents and purposes, likely true. But there's always the possibility that he was telling a true story, at least to a degree. The previous writings of the city of Atlantis may have just been lost to time, just like a lot of things are. Heck, we could find the other writings tomorrow. Just because we don't have them now doesn't mean we won't ever find them, or that they simply don't exist. So what if it is a true story? What does that mean for this whole Aquaman thing? Well, let's stay in ancient Greece for just a little longer. You know who the Greeks worshipped? Gods. You know who Plato likens the Atlanteans to in his writings? Yep. Gods. Now, wait, wait, wait. Are you telling us that there is an island of literal gods, K-Life? You insane? No, I'm not. Bear with me. I'm not saying there were gods, but you gotta remember what people used to consider godlike and magic. In the Dark Ages, people believed that they were wizards, and that the Black Plague was literally death itself, running through the town, killing people slowly as type of God's punishment. And that sort of thing changes throughout history. There has always been, and there always will be things, that we just don't understand. Even religion itself, while I'm not saying any religion is right or wrong, often explains that the universe was created by a deity of some kind. People without religion look to more scientific ways to try and figure that out, and that's okay too, I'm not bashing on either. But the thing is, that's history repeating itself. We've got questions about the universe around us that we just don't know how to answer. Some people believe one answer, some people believe another, some people like me don't know what to think of it, and that's always been a staple of human society. In ancient Greece, gods were an explanation for the seemingly unnatural things in an otherwise natural world around them. Lightning to them was bolts of pure white light that flashed angrily from places they couldn't see up to. 
To them, that must have meant that something was throwing these bolts down from somewhere so high no human had ever seen it. To them, seasons were simply the will of a goddess, who was sad and happy depending on whether she was a lot of time with her own daughter. It all made sense to them at the time, and we have some answers to things now that make sense to us, but we could be completely wrong. That's just how it is. So, if the Atlanteans were real, were they gods? Probably not. However, they may have been a more advanced society. According to the widely accepted theory of evolution, there's been a lot of different types of humans, and we're finding new ones all the time. That means we've got at least a few more types of humans that we just haven't seen yet. Again, just because we haven't found it doesn't mean it's not out there. So, it's possible the Atlanteans were the other surviving type of humans, alongside Homo sapiens, which would have been basically the rest of the world at that time. And we know there's been a few species of humans that have allegedly died out, but we found animals we thought were extinct before, so I don't think we should rule out surviving populations of these types of humans. Who's to say the Atlanteans weren't simply a different type of human that the Greeks and Plato just didn't know how to understand? It's at least possible, and it even makes sense that Plato would call them godlike. Again, this was an age where gods and magic was used to explain the unexplainable. But it's pretty ridiculous that they become like Aquaman, right? Well, maybe not. A theory exists called the Aquatic Ape Theory. The Aquatic Ape Theory basically states that somewhere along the line of evolution, certain primate ancestors of ours may have had to adapt to a semi-aquatic environment, even spending time living underwater, although it may have only been for hours at a time. However, there is little evidence to back up the theory, other than the fact that we don't know everything. However, there is some things that you may find interesting. Some basic evidence that may or may not back up the Aquatic Ape Theory is actually how good primates can swim. Before certain events transpired, it was believed that non-human primates could not swim. However, this was not only disproven, but blown out of the water, no pun intended. Many primates, like orangutans and chimpanzees, are actually excellent swimmers, even though the environments they live in rarely require them to do so. It's almost like an instinct. Could that instinct be one left over from semi-aquatic or fully aquatic ancestors? Again. It's at least possible. Keep in mind, we have explored very little of our oceans. A lot of people are probably thinking I'm exaggerating, right? Well, here's the exact number. We have explored literally 5% of the Earth's oceans. We have literally no idea what 95% of the ocean is. Meaning, we possibly have only found 5% of all aquatic species. Could one of the species in the remaining 95% be some kind of aquatic primates? The answer might surprise you. This is a far more controversial topic, but there is, in all seriousness, evidence to support the existence of what most would call mermaids. I prefer to call the supposed animals marine primates, although the term marine humanoids could also work since it's debatable whether those creatures, if they exist, are primates or not. But they are certainly primate-like. Keep in mind, I'm not saying they're real. But I'm not saying they don't exist, either. I'm keeping an open mind and looking at the evidence that there is. I'm going to show some stills from a video taken by marine biologists right here, and I'll link all the videos I'll show in the description. Just take a quick look at all of them. So, those are all, allegedly, videos taken during sightings or encounters with quote-unquote mermaids. From what I can see, these mermaids seem to, again, resemble primates, but it's debatable whether or not they could actually be considered that. Now, I know about this because I actually want to pursue a career in a science called cryptozoology. Cryptozoology is the study of creatures that may or may not exist, like Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, and the Giant Squid. By the way, for all those who are like, this is a bunch of bullshit, there have been several animals in cryptozoology that have already been proven real, like the giant squid, the okapi, and debatably the orang pendek, which, if it is eventually decided real, is considered a primitive, ancient species of human that has survived in small populations. We just brought this full circle, huh? So, basically what I'm saying is that it's possible that the aquatic ape theory is true, and that's always been possible. And if it is true, the ancient Greek Atlanteans could have been the product of those semi-aquatic ancestors, with the Atlanteans being a semi-aquatic species of humans that have been lost to history. 
Now, the whole thing with the Night of Fire and Earthquakes actually happened to several other islands before. It happens in areas with high tectonic and volcanic activity. Basically, Atlantis got totally destroyed by natural disasters. However, if the people were semi-aquatic, it's possible that small populations could survive the destruction. Not only that, but because they were semi-aquatic, they could have possibly rebuilt Atlantis under the ocean, although it would be nowhere near as magnificent as the original city. Now, these people, again, were allegedly not very nice to others, and preferred to stay secluded on their island paradise. This sounds like isolationism to me. Isolationism is basically when a country completely cuts itself off from the rest of the world. Japan did this at one point, and that period of time, known as the Edo period, lasted for about 250 years. When the outside world finally we found them, it was literally like stepping back in time 200 years. They barely knew what guns were. So, isolationism is a pretty dedicated ideal. If the Atlanteans wanted to be isolated, they'd stay isolated. It's possible that after they rebuilt Atlantis under the water, they would continue to spread amongst themselves and over time, evolve into a species that was more adapted to the water. They probably wouldn't look like much how we see Aquaman, though. In fact, they would look more like this terrifying thing. But they'd still be an advanced species, likely capable of speech and intelligent interaction between other humans. And one more thing, get this. We have found physical evidence of Atlantis. There's been several artifacts found under the ocean that just lack valid explanation. The most famous of these is literally a large line of perfectly cut stone squares just lying at the sea floor. That's pretty weird, if you ask me. So, in conclusion, Atlantis possibly exists, and so do Atlanteans. But do they have superpowers like Aquaman? Probably not, and even the original Atlanteans probably didn't have that. The only superpower they might have is superhuman strength, but only on land. This would be due to their bodies becoming so used to the massive pressure underwater that they could perform amazing physical feats in areas with far less pressure, like on land. Would they look as godly as Aquaman? The original Atlanteans may have looked like Hawaiian Jesus here, but if they do exist, I doubt they look nearly as good. Is Aquaman possibly out there somewhere, or at least someone like him? Maybe, and maybe not. You know what Bruce Lee once said, be like water, roll with the punches, and definitely keep an open mind, because you never know what's still out there. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. Honestly, that was my favorite episode so far, because I got to say a lot of stuff that I believe in, like keeping an open mind and all that, and really talking about the science of the natural world around us and what we don't know yet is something that I am just so, so passionate about. And that's why I had a lot of fun making this episode for you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, I will be doing requested episodes this time. I just wanted to get this one done because I could not wait. I simply couldn't wait. And make sure to check those videos out in the description, guys. They're really interesting. And I suggest you guys look into them more and form your own opinions on them. But aside from that, guys, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment if you enjoyed. And make sure that comment is about what superhero or supervillain you guys want me to see me do in the future. And aside from that, guys, thanks for watching the video. Enjoy yourselves.